Stormy Stormy, and here's your horoscope for June 2018. And man, you better get your patience cap on this month because your ruling planet Mars is going to be going retrograde. So like any other retrograde, we're going to re, re-look at, re, 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 but re what? All of the things that Mars is about, strategy, energy, action, desires, those kinds of things. We're going to redo those things. Why am I taking action on this thing? Why am I putting my energy into this? Why do I desire this? What can I re-strategize this to look like so it's more effective? These are all the questions we're going to answer as we get to June 26th all the way until August. And because it's your ruling planet, this could be a little bit more intense. And it could also be a little bit more intense if you have any other planets in the sign of Aquarius, since this is where this retrograde is going to be happening. But before then, Aries, I'm telling you, you've got the beginning part of the month to really work with. So let's jump in and get to these dates and these aspects right out the gate, okay? So right at the beginning of the month, Month. We've actually got some pretty good energy here. Just here on the 12th, we've got Mercury, who along with Venus, Mercury's coming into the sign of Cancer and will be there all the way from June 12th all the way until the end of the month. And this hits right inside of your fourth house. This brings a lot of communication and a lot of harmony, a lot of beauty, a lot of good thinking, even about your home space. Because remember, the, the fourth house is home, property, real estate, but also your internal foundations, right? You may be realizing you want to create a little bit more harmony in your internal thinking and your structures to your foundational level beliefs, right? This is also great for relationships with women or nurturing. Any of these things that fall into the fourth house I think are phenomenal. And the question I always get about this is, is it a great time to move? I think this is a phenomenal energy to move if you're going to be doing it in the beginning half of the month. Mercury is very business savvy, so if the beginning of the month you are signing that lease and then moving in, I think you're stellar. If you can wait, if the timing, and it depends on your personal chart, if you can wait on the timing until after the retrograde, I think that's even better. But again, that depends on your personal chart, okay? Now, when we get to the 13th, we've got new moon energy, and this one is in our chatty energy of Gemini. So Gemini for you is going to be hitting this third house, the space of communications, right? Now this is a new moon that also welcomes Venus coming into Leo into your fifth house. So communicating passionately, your self-expression, um, really taking a risk, getting out there, falling in love with something that you're doing. The fifth house is a house of conception, beginning. So this is also a wonderful energy for Megan Baby. So if you don't want to do that, <laughs> make sure you are protected. Wonderful energy for new businesses and things like that. But here at the new moon, with the new moon saying, hey, let's plant these seeds of intention to blossom something new. This is a wonderful energy to initiate a new communication. YouTube, Facebook, um, update that website. If you've got a resume that needs to be updated, if you are a writer, wonderful energy. Any kind of communication with cousins, siblings, things like that, this is going to be beautiful. Now, one thing I do think you should keep in mind this month, Aries, is that even even though Mars does not take that retrograde until the 26th, you may want things to be happening quickly because that tends to be that Aries energy and it is not going to happen fast. Even though that retrograde doesn't happen until then, there's a lot of patience that has to be happening because Mars is slowed down. He's been in the slowdown. So things are not going to happen quickly. But the beauty of that, especially here at this new moon with these new beginnings, is sometimes, Aries, you're moving so quickly that you have run past a whole field of beautiful flowers you could be taking advantage of. Or you've been just zipping past all of these opportunities and you were moving so quickly, you didn't even have enough time to slow down and see that they were there. So in the slowdown, in the slower movement of all of it, there are opportunities, people, places, things, and ideas that are really going to get in align with where you're trying to go. So I think this is a beautiful energy here at this new moon. So plant those seeds of intention, start something new, bring a new spotlight to the communication sector of your world, okay? When we get to the 14th, we've got Venus and Uranus in a square. Now this is their second and their last that they're going to have for the year, okay? So what this tends to bring is upsets to finance, or relationships because those are what both Venus and Uranus are about. For you, this is going to hit in both the fifth house and the twelfth house. So I think this creates a little bit of a shakeup for you, Aries, somewhere between here's what I'm passionate about or here's this beginning relationship or here's this risk that I'm taking and I've got a little bit of fear. 
over here, right? I've got a little bit of I'm unsure of in this 12th house space. Now, where I think that's delicious and you can lean into that and use that is this may help you bring that thing from the 12th house, that hidden space, those projects that we've been working on that were quiet, those emotions, those thoughts, these feelings we've been having for a while and we haven't been expressing. So it can definitely usher something out into the open so that it can be handled and turned into something productive. So lovely energy. Now, when we get to the 15th, we're actually seeing a peak of the Mercury Saturn opposition, okay? This is an energy where in your housing zone, somewhere between work and home, you could be feeling a little bit of tension because remember, I told you we are in the slowdown. You're trying to get something to happen. You're trying to move something forward. And yes, it's gonna go, but you're in the slowdown. It's not gonna go as quickly as you want it to. Now, the beauty of a Mercury-Saturn opposition is while it can bring some frustrating feelings to the table, whatever it's bringing, it's trying to bring a maturity and a grounding to it. So this will be happening between your fourth and your 10th houses. So keep in mind that whatever structure is trying to be created here is trying to be something solid and mature that you can build on going forward. When we get to the 18th of the month, Neptune is going to take her retrograde all the way until November, and this will be happening in your 12th house. Now, Neptune being an outer planet can be very, very subtle. So I would be expecting for you that you don't necessarily feel this as intensely, but this is a beautiful energy for spiritual reworking. Is there a cleanup that you need to do? What about that fight you had back in the 80s? Do you need to relook at that? Where are you at spiritually today? Are you current with your own beliefs and your own reality? Are you really being who you are presenting out into the world? Things like that. I think in the 12th house space, this is a beautiful time to relook at, rework that spirituality, reconnect it, get that meditation in there. You're already in the slow down, bring that to the table in the forefront as well. Now, when we get to the 21st, the sun is going to enter into Cancer. This is the first day of summer. We're talking summer solstice. Yes, this is a whole new season. I get really excited when we change seasons because in Western astrology, we follow the seasons, not the constellations. So this is just a breath of fresh air for all of us. The sun is out. We are getting these shoulders showing a little bit more. It's the longest day of the year, and it's definitely something to be enjoyed. Now, on this exact same day, Venus and Mars are having their annual opposition. Where this is delicious for you is it will help you see things differently. It's going to help you see things from a fresh, new perspective. And you've got the longest day of the year to be able to really reevaluate what's going on, who's in your world, what's working, what's not working, right? Now on the 26th, we've got Mars taking this retrograde. It's going to be happening in this 11th house for you in the sign of Aquarius. So 11th house, what do we have here? First of all, if you are involved in any organization or any grouping that's a social grouping, maybe not so much for work unless, you know, you do something at work and you're a part of a committee or something like that, where the grouping is, this includes the gym, you're going to be re-looking at your strategy, your actions. What am I doing here? What are my desires, my hopes, my dreams and desires? Is this grouping helping me meet my hopes, dreams and desires? Um, any of the, those kinds of things. And friendships. Friendships, you will be re-looking at it. I would not be surprised if during this Mars retrograde you don't have some friends or some kind of group situation walk out of your life or you walk out of theirs because it's just not the right fit anymore. Now, what else do we have when we talk about Aquarius? All things technological, right? Maybe you've got to relook at your technology. Maybe it's time for an upgrade, right? Maybe it's time for you to be looking at where are you not actually connected to an organization or a group that could be helping you? Where are you not plugged in enough, right? Neptune is retrograde at this point. Do you spiritually have a group of people who are helping you be plugged and connected in? Okay, uh, do you have that group of people that's helping you be an activist in the way that you would like to be an activist, right? Or are you not using your technology to connect in that way? Whatever it is, I think what's beautiful about seeing this is that you're going to have this realization at this point that things have to be tweaked a little bit if you're going to be able to move forward successfully, okay? 
On the 28th, we've got a full moon happening here in Capricorn at the top of your chart. I love this energy because even though it's a full moon and the full moon says we have to end something, acknowledge something, or adjust something, you are really, you've got a spotlight on your career life right now. And I think it's probably been a beautiful time for you, Aries, where you've been able to do a little bit of climbing, which is exactly something that is right up your, your alley. You know, you've got this leadership energy. You should be out there using it. So this is a wonderful time for you in a professional spotlight where you could be getting some acknowledgement you could we're in a slow down energy right now maybe you've slowed down enough that you're learning a new skill maybe you're in a training program or something like that and because you're not moving so fast you're not having to be the boss you're able to just relax and learn a little bit and really take it in that takes you to the next level after mars comes out of retrograde so it's actually a beautiful full moon for you up here um, to get some recognition in this career zone as well now on the 29th we've got mercury moving on entering into leo and he'll be there all the way from june 29th until september and this is in your fifth house so if you are single and trying to mingle this is a beautiful energy to help you be social have some conversation you know the fifth house is true love children, beginnings, all of those kinds of things, self-expression. This is a wonderful energy to help you connect with some new people. And also to maybe have a conversation if you've got children in your life and you've had to make some decisions about you know, where are you going to school next? What are we doing here? Any of these conversations, remember, Mercury is very, very business savvy. So in decision making, whether it be on the business of home, on the business of children, on the business of business, Mercury is here and in a really nice setup space with that big, brilliant, I wanna shine Leo energy to help you get those things done. So I think it's gonna be a busy month. You do get to enjoy the slowdown. And I, when I say enjoy, I mean Aries, try and learn to enjoy the slowdown because <laughs> there's plenty going on this month to definitely keep you busy but if the frustration creeps on you especially in the beginning of the month just remember slow down let's redirect re-strategize because still good things can come even in a slowdown all right all right guys like this video comment share subscribe i look forward to seeing what june has and brings up for you so keep me posted in the comment section down below okay i love you